Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, the federal drone drama continues. King Air makes Autoland emergency landing. And USAF designates Northrop Grumman Project Talon YFQ-48A. And I'm your host, Talon Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flights, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. The federal drone drama continues. As many took a step away from political chaos to celebrate the holidays, the FCC abruptly issued a public notice that places all drones made by foreign nations on a list of items deemed to pose an unacceptable risk to national security and public safety. This doesn't mean the agency got off easy, however, with organizations quickly firing back about the lack of notice. Public Notice DA-25-1086, released on December 22, does not ground or outlaw existing drones or components that were authorized before December 21. The issue is what comes next. Since the vast majority of drone and model aircraft components are manufactured overseas, the ruling effectively slams the door on future certifications unless exemptions or some sort of relief mechanisms take shape. That political impact spans hobbyist model aviation, commercial operators, manufacturers, and supply chains that are far from domestic. Industry groups, including the Academy of Model Aeronautics, say the bigger concern stretches further than just the substance of the decision. The FCC's Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau relied on authority granted under the 2025 National Defense Authorization Act, allowing it to bypass the standard public notice and comment process. Stakeholders who typically expect warning and a chance to weigh in instead found out after the fact, conveniently timed during the holiday. After the break, Leonardo's next-gen tilt rotor gets off the ground. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Leonardo's Next Gen Tilt Rotor gets off the ground. Leonardo has added another tilt rotor to its proven resume, checking off the first slide of its next generation civil tilt rotor technology demonstrator. The test took place December 19, 2025 at Leonardo's Cascina Costa di Samarate facility. The NGCTR program has been in motion since 2015 and is being developed alongside the European Union's clean aviation joint undertaking. It aims to combine helicopter-style vertical takeoff and landing with the cruise speed and range of a fixed-wing aircraft without the performance compromises that traditionally follow. FAA serves up $15.7 million penalty on Airy Aviation. The FAA has proposed a fine of $15.7 million against Airy Aviation of Newport News, Virginia for allegedly conducting unsafe operations in multiple unairworthy Learjets. The agency alleged in a statement on December 22 that the company installed banner and target towing equipment on Learjets without completing the required maintenance, return to service documentation, or the proper airworthiness certificates. ARI provides aircraft mods and special mission aviation services for government and commercial customers. The agency says ARI failed to secure the restricted category airworthiness certificates and operated the unairworthy aircraft on 431 flights between July 2021 and April 2022. FAA issues concern sheet over Lycoming IO360 rollbacks. The FAA issued an airworthiness concern sheet December 16 regarding reported instances of uncommanded shutdowns, referred to as rollbacks, of aircraft equipped with Lycoming IO360 engines and Avstar manufactured vertical and horizontal mounted fuel servos when the throttle was reduced to idle. Engine rollbacks have been reported by both operators and OEMs on production and in-service Cessna 172S and R aircraft, as well as the Piper Archer II, 
Pilot 100i, and Seminole aircraft with IO360 engines. NASA named SpaceX Crew 12 members for ISS. NASA announced the crew members for its upcoming SpaceX Crew 12 mission to the ISS in early 2026. Four crew members from three space agencies will launch no earlier than February 15th for a long duration science mission. The crew include NASA astronauts Jessica Meir and Jack Hathaway, who will serve as commander and pilot, respectively. They'll be joined by ESA astronaut Sophie Adeno and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedyaev, who will be the mission specialists. That's it for our Next Gen Minute. Let's get back to the rest of the news. King Air makes Autoland emergency landing. A Beach B-200 Super King Air November 479 Bravo Romeo made an Autoland emergency landing at Broomfield Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport in Colorado in what appears to be the first real-time use of the safety feature, though the actual emergency appears to be somewhat questionable. An avionics rep admitted that they could, quote, confirm an emergency Autoland activation occurred in Broomfield, Colorado. The Autoland took place Saturday, December 20th, resulting in a successful landing. We look forward to sharing additional details at the appropriate time, end quote. They also claimed it was the first use of the system that was not a test or demonstration, but was it an actual emergency? The operating company said that everyone involved was okay. The aircraft was being operated by Buffalo River Outfitters. It's still unclear from reports why the auto land feature was activated, since both pilots were not incapacitated as originally claimed, and were apparently functioning normally throughout the flight. The FAA confirmed that they were, quote, investigating. There were no passengers when the aircraft, quote, experienced a rapid, uncommanded loss of pressurization, end quote, according to Buffalo River Outfitters, who owns the plane. The two pilots immediately put on their oxygen masks, and the Autoland system, quote, automatically engaged exactly as designed when the cabin altitude exceeded the prescribed safe levels, end quote. The pilots decided to leave the system engaged due to the complexity of the situation. After these messages, USAF designates Northrop Grumman Project Talon YFQ-48A. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. USAF designates Northrop Grumman Project Talon YFQ-48A. The U.S. Air Force announced it has designated the mission design series for Northrop Grumman's Project Talon as the YFQ-48A, which will be a semi-autonomous prototype in the company's collaborative combat aircraft program. The designation acknowledges the YFQ-48A as a strong contender in the service's CCA program. The CCA program is intended to bring affordable, advanced, semi-autonomous aircraft to complement the Air Force's manned fighter fleet to enhance operational flexibility and combat effectiveness in the increasingly competitive and complex global security landscape. Brigadier General Jason Voorhees, Program Executive Officer for Fighters and Advanced Aircraft, said, quote, We are encouraged by Northrop Grumman's continued investment in developing advanced, semi-autonomous capabilities. Their approach aligns with our strategy to foster competition, drive industry innovation, and deliver cutting-edge tech at speed and scale, end quote. The CCA program strategy of continuous competition provides multiple opportunities for industry participation. Its open competition approach enables the Air Force to take advantage of the most innovative solutions from across the industrial base in the defense sector to meet the evolving demands of modern warfare. The Air Force intends to continue competition in future phases of the program to ensure the most capable solutions get delivered to warfighters. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.